Frontline Updates, where we delve deep into military strategies and updates from conflict zones. Today, we're discussing the progress of the ongoing special military operation as of October 16th, 2024. I'm your host, Sharifa Muhammad MGT. I'm Colonel A.C. Ogentoy, an infantry officer. Widespread military operations. The Russian armed forces are continuing their military operations across multiple regions, including the Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Kherson, and Kursk regions. The focus remains on defeating Ukrainian forces, repelling counterattacks, and advancing into enemy positions. Welcome to Frontline Updates Podcast the podcast that brings you exclusive updates and expert analysis from military operations around the world. Today, we're joined by Colonel A.C. Ogentoy, an infantry officer leading ground operations on the ongoing special military operation. Colonel Ogentoy, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm here to provide an update on the current state of the operation. Let's dive right in, Colonel. Could you give us an overview of what's been happening on the ground as of October 16th, 2024? The Russian armed forces have been making consistent progress across multiple fronts. In the past 24 hours, our forces have continued to inflict significant losses on Ukrainian forces, repel counterattacks, and liberate key settlements. We've seen notable successes in the Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, and Zaporizhia regions, as well as defensive operations in the Kursk region. That's a broad scope of activity. Could we start with the North Group of Forces in the Kharkiv region? What's the latest there? In the Liptsov and Vovchansk directions of the Kharkiv region, our North Group of Forces defeated formations of the Ukrainian 57th Motorized Infantry and 92nd Airborne Assault Brigades near the settlements of Lipsy, Bolshai, and Meili Prokhody. We neutralized up to 40 Ukrainian servicemen, destroyed two 122mm D-30 howitzers, and eliminated a warehouse of unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs. These strikes have disrupted the Ukrainian forces' ability to coordinate and resupply. That's a critical blow to their capabilities. Now, the West Group of Forces has been particularly active. What can you tell us about their actions? The West Group of Forces made significant progress by liberating the settlement of Nevskoy in the Luhansk People's Republic. Additionally, we inflicted heavy losses on Ukrainian forces from the 43rd, 44th, and 53rd Mechanized Brigades, as well as the 1st National Guard Brigade, in multiple locations across the Kharkiv region, including Kupiansk and Berestovoy. We repelled five counterattacks by Ukrainian assault groups, and their losses amounted to over 430 servicemen. We also destroyed a tank, military vehicles, a U.S.-made 105mm M119 howitzer, and an Anklavin electronic warfare station. An ammunition depot was also neutralized. It sounds like Ukrainian forces have suffered major setbacks in those areas. How are things unfolding for the southern group of forces? The southern group of forces continues to advance into the enemy's defenses in the Donetsk region. We defeated Ukrainian formations, including the 28th Mechanized Brigade, 46th Airmobile Brigade, and 79th Airborne Assault Brigade near settlements like Ilyenka, Kurakovo, and Konstantinovka. Despite seven counterattacks by the 81st Airmobile and 54th Mechanized Brigades, we repelled each one, inflicting heavy casualties. The enemy lost approximately 710 servicemen, two pickup trucks, and a U.S.-made 155mm M777 howitzer. Our forces are steadily pushing deeper into their defensive lines. It sounds like your forces are maintaining strong momentum in the south. What about the center group of forces? Are they seeing similar success? Yes, the center group of forces successfully liberated the settlement of Krasny Yar in the Donetsk People's Republic. We also inflicted significant losses on Ukrainian forces, including the 67th, 150th Mechanized Brigades and the 59th Motorized Infantry Brigade. In total, we repelled 10 counterattacks from various Ukrainian brigades, including the 23rd Mechanized Brigade and the 38th Marine Brigade. The enemy lost up to 465 servicemen, as well as two Turkish-made Kozak and Kirpi combat armored vehicles. 
Additionally, we destroyed several artillery pieces, including a 152mm D-20 gun and a 122mm D-30 howitzer. That's an impressive defensive effort. How about in the East? I understand the East Group of Forces also had some key developments. Correct. The East Group of Forces secured more advantageous positions and inflicted losses on the 72nd Mechanized Brigade and Territorial Defense Brigades in Zaporizhia and Donetsk regions. We repelled a counterattack by the 152nd Jaeger Brigade, causing the loss of 100 Ukrainian servicemen and destroying a Polish-made 155mm self-propelled artillery unit crab. These gains strengthen our control in the region. And finally, Colonel, how are things progressing for the DNEPR group of forces? The Dnieper group of forces inflicted losses on Ukrainian formations, including the 31st and 65th Mechanized Brigades, as well as the 141st Infantry Brigade and 35th Marine Brigade. These engagements took place in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions, including settlements like Kamenskoy and Orkov. Ukrainian forces lost up to 75 servicemen and several vehicles, including a 152mm D-20 gun and a 122mm Gvozdika self-propelled artillery unit. We also neutralized a Mandad B-1E electronic warfare station and destroyed an ammunition depot. It seems like Russian forces are making significant advances across multiple fronts. Now, there's been a lot of attention on the operations in the Kursk region. Could you update us on that front? In the Kursk region, we've been defending against Ukrainian incursions. Our North Group of Forces continued offensive operations, defeating several Ukrainian mechanized and airborne assault brigades, including the 22nd, 41st, and 82nd Brigades. Over the last 24 hours, we repelled nine counterattacks, causing the Ukrainian forces to lose up to 70 personnel. We also destroyed a tank, an infantry fighting vehicle, and several armored vehicles. Additionally, six Ukrainian servicemen surrendered. It sounds like a tough battle, but your forces are holding strong. Before we wrap up, Colonel, could you share with us the broader impact of your operations and any significant outcomes from the air and missile strikes? Our operational tactical aviation, UAVs, missile troops, and artillery have been instrumental in targeting Ukrainian infrastructure. We destroyed a warehouse of unmanned boats, damaged a military airfield, and hit two facilities producing explosives and ammunition. Our strikes also targeted an oil refinery that supplied fuel to Ukrainian forces, and we neutralized coastal anti-ship missile systems and concentrations of enemy forces in 138 areas. Additionally, our air defense systems intercepted three U.S.-made HIMARS rockets and shot down 56 UAVs. Can you talk about the plans of the Russian armed forces to strike towards the Dnieper and not to linger in Donbass? Foreign analysts have published an interesting map with the main supply channels of the Ukrainian armed forces in Donbass. A significant part of the logistics arm passes through Pokrovsk and Pavlograd. In addition to these cities, the supply line is held at the Chaplino and Pokrovsko stations. However, none of them will make sense if Pavlograd itself, through which the Ukrainian armed forces have been pulling supplies since the very beginning of the special military operation, is under threat. In a sense, a strike on Pavlograd via Pokrovsk will be like cutting off the head of a snake if this region collapses, then supplying the Ukrainian group throughout the entire territory of Donbass will be extremely difficult. Bringing up reserves via Kharkov will be a non-trivial task, since the Ukrainian armed forces garrisons in Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, and Chesov Yarm may not even get this supply. Colonel, thank you for providing such a detailed briefing on the current military situation. Your insights are invaluable to our understanding of the conflict's dynamics. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Join us next time as we continue to provide up-to-date coverage on global military affairs. Stay with us for more updates and expert analyses on global defense and security issues. Stay informed, stay secure. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to share these updates with you. Dozens of Palestinians have been killed in Israeli attacks across the Gaza Strip. This includes the north of Gaza, where the Israeli military launched an offensive 11 days ago. At least 55 people were killed in the past 24 hours in the enclave, according to Gaza's Ministry of Health. 
At least 12 bodies were recovered after an Israeli attack near Al-Fallujah in the besieged Jabalia refugee camp.